Hey everybody, I'm Eric Wagner and it's time for another video. Uh, this video is going to be part three in the three-part series talking about ArcGIS solutions. So in part one we talked about what are solutions, in part two we took a look at the water distribution data management solution, uh, how it actually works and the different applications that come along with it. Uh, part three here is going to focus on uh, how you can expand the solution a little bit more to get it to fit your particular utilities needs. So if you haven't watched part one or two, I highly recommend it. The links are down below. We're going to cover three different topics in this video. Uh, in this case, it's going to be how do you change the map extent of the applications that come with the solution. Uh, we're going to take a look then at how we can add in additional dropdown values and then how we can add extra attribute values to allow you to record and collect the data that you need. So let's go ahead and dive into ArcGIS Online and take a look. And here we are in ArcGIS Online with all the different web maps and apps and data sets that the solution comes with. Now, again, the first thing we'll take a look at is how we can change the default extent of any of these web mapping applications when people first open them. So for example, if I go into that water distribution editor from the previous video, and I go in here and I uh, view the application, we'll see that its default extent is the whole entire United States. Not particularly helpful because I'm sure you probably want this to focus on your area of interest, your service territory. So if I go back into the item page for this application, I'm going to click on edit application. And we'll, we'll take a look at this at a high level, but this is how the whole app is configured. And there's really a lot that you can do here. But most notably, what I can do is I can zoom in to my area of interest here in Southeastern Pennsylvania. I'll center it on my data. And what I'll do is I'll click on the map tab on the far left hand side. And I'm going to say use current map view. So whatever extent I have set here is going to be that default extent when someone opens up this particular application in the future. So I'll say current, use current map view. I'll press save. Give it a second. And now anytime that someone comes in here into the water distribution editor and opens it for the first time or a future time, or in my case here, just refreshes it, we'll see that it opens up to our extent of interest. That's kind of the first thing we can do here to help customize and tailor this solution to our needs. So what are some other ways that we can go about expanding this? Well, if I zoom in here and I take a look at one of our assets here, such as this fire hydrant we collected earlier, we might notice if we come in here and take a look at our manufacturer, we have a default list of values here. But what if you wanted to go ahead and expand on this? How could we maybe add in a new value that isn't included here? Well, to exp explain this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a step into a PowerPoint presentation here, just a real quick slide for us to take a look at. Because this is a, a really simple uh, schematic of how everything works with this solution, and it's worth mentioning at this point in time. In our case here, we're taking a look at this uh, existing uh, editing web application, and it pulls on the underlying web map. So the map feeds into the app. Well, the web map has data in it. And we have a series of views that allow you to control what functionality is possible. So maybe you have the ability to edit or maybe just view, which is the ability to not edit. Um, but this view is then created off of a hosted feature layer, which stores all of your data. In the event you want to learn a little bit more about these things called views, there is a link to a video down below that I made about views as well. But the short of it is, is that the data that you're collecting out in the field or that you're uh, editing in this application is going into this view, which in then in turn is going into this hosted feature layer. So in the event that you want to add an additional value to one of your dropdown lists, you have to go all the way back to the hosted feature layer that's powering this entire application. So what exactly does that look like? Well, if I were to go back into my content for the solution, what we'll see, you know, just as an illustration here is, you know, here's my application, here's the app that powers it, uh, and then I have those different views that are within those web maps. But they all point back to the water distribution system feature layer. This was what, what was on the left-hand side of that previous diagram. So I'm going to go in here, and I'll be able to see all of my different layers. So in particular, I want to add a new manufacturer to my fire hydrant layer. So I'm going to click on the data tab and I'm going to select my fire hydrant layer. And then I'll go into its fields. 
And in here we can see for my fire hydrant layer within water distribution system, I have the manufacturer field. And here's my list of values. So I can come in here and I can edit this. And here's all those different values that we saw in the editor application. And I'm gonna add in a new one. And we'll just call this Wagner. And I'm just going to give it then the next number in order. So we can see 71, 72, 73, and 74. And then I'm going to actually drag this up to the top so it appears first uh, on my list. And I'll press the Save button. So now what I need to do is I've cleaned this up here within the hosted feature layer. This right over here. Now I need to go into the view and allow this new value to be accessible in the view, so that way it can be made accessible in the editing application. So what would that look like? Well, if I go into content, and I'm gonna go and find the water distribution system editing view. We'll click on this, and I'm gonna go through a very similar process. I'll click on the data tab. I'll go to my fire hydrant layer, access its fields, again go into Manufacturer, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to say Reset to Source, because notice here that Wagner value is not present. So if I click Reset to Source, we'll now see that Wagner is here and it's present up at the top. So now that I've cleaned this up in the Hosted Feature layer, I've made it accessible in the view, it's going to be now accessible to me within my editing web application. So if I go into Water Distribution Editor, I'm just going to give this a refresh so that way it takes in these new changes. And then if I zoom in to my fire hydrant to edit it or any new fire hydrant that I choose to add, and I come into Manufacturer, I'll now see that I can choose this new drop-down value. And you can do this for any of the drop-down values that you see across the entire solution. Diameters, nozzle diameters, manufacturer, types of assets, etc. So there's another way that we can go about uh, expanding this solution to include values of interest to you. Now a third way that we can go ahead and clean this up as well is what if you wanted to add in a whole nother a whole nother field. Maybe there's an attribute of interest to you that you want to collect that wasn't included with this solution. Well the process again is going to be similar. So if I go back to this diagram, well we want to make an extra field be accessible here which means we have to make it accessible in the view and the view pulls on this underlying uh, hosted feature layer. So let's go into that process. So if I go back into my content, I'll go back into my hosted feature layer, water distribution system, click on the data tab. This time I'm just gonna click on fields and then choose my layer. And we'll go into fire hydrant. And in here, I now have the ability to add a new field. So we'll click Add, and we'll just call this Test Field. And when I give it a name up here, it cannot have any spaces, but it can have a space in the display name. And then I can choose the type of field I want this to be. As a quick overview, in the event you're not familiar with this, uh, the date field stores date and time, string stores alphanumeric characters, A, B, C, 1, 2, 3, integer stores numbers, but no decimal places, so one, two, three, four. Double allows you to store only numbers with decimal places, so 1.2, 7.9, something like that. We'll make my test field just be a string, and I'll click Add New Field. Now the saving process may take a couple seconds, but in the event that it hangs up on you like this, you can just simply go and press the Refresh button on your browser. I'm gonna go back into Fields and choose my layer, which was fire hydrant, and now we'll see down at the bottom that test field is now present to me. So again, it's been added into the main hosted feature layer. Now we need to activate it on the view that's used within the applications. So in that case, what I'll do is I'll go back up to my content and I'll find my view of interest. Again, this is the editing view. So I'll open up my editing view and instead of going into the data tab like we did before, I'm going to go into the visualization tab. And the visual, visualization tab really just kind of controls how does this layer act or function when used within a web map. 
And in particular, we're going to again look for fire hydrant. And when this view is used in a map, we want to control which fields are made visible. So I'm going to go into the set view definition and choose define fields. Because we added that new field into the hosted feature layer, we need to activate it here within the view. So if I scroll down to the bottom, we'll see there's that test field. I'll turn it on. I'll press apply. Give it a second to save. Now if I go back into the water distribution editor and reload the page, what I'll then see is if I zoom back in to my fire hydrant and click on it here, I'll notice that down at the very bottom, I now have that new test field where I can enter in a string value. So again, what a lot of this process comes back to in the event you want to update your, um, do, um, your domain values, those drop-down lists, or if you want to change the fields that are accessible to you, it's really just a matter of going back to this main hosted feature layer, adding your fields, adding your drop-down values, and then activating them. And that's really all there is to it in order to help you expand the solution to help it incorporate any additional attributes or attribute values that you would like to see collected in the field or at the office. So with that, we covered quite a bit in this video as to how you can go about and expand this existing solution. We took a look at how you can update the extent of your maps. We took a look at how you can add additional drop-down values, as well as how you can add in additional attribute fields. So that draws this three-part series to a conclusion of how we can take a look and work with the water data management solution that we have in place for you. As always, thanks for watching.